To mark the position of the tenon from the mortise, I make sure I've got my face mark, which, it, which will go against the jig, on this side, and I mark the position of the tenon away from the face. And that's where I line my, two, uh, my saw blade up with, to cut this side. And then when the jig moves over, it will cut the other side as well. But I need one side, and I have to start away from the face. So the first thing we do is make sure that the jig is in the closed position. That's very important. And the workpiece goes in with the face mark against the jig. Like that. And so now we have to adjust the fence of the machine so that the blade is cutting just to the waist side of this cheek of the tenon. So Actually, I think that's <laughs> I think that's bang on. I think that's bang on. So all we've got to do now is install this blade guard like that, and we're ready to go. This jig cuts the tenon cheeks perfectly, but of course I still have to cut the shoulders. If I have a batch to do, I might set up my crosscut fence on the table saw, and then trim the width on my bandsaw, but for this demonstration I'm doing all the shoulder cuts on the bandsaw. I can finesse the shoulders with my mitre jack if I need to. Now you can see on this mock-up of a face frame that although it's a very good fit, it's not quite in the right position. I've got a step there and that would mean I'd have to plane all this off to make it flush and the same on the underside of the rail. So this is what we do. We measure how much that is. And that's telling me it is 0.59 millimeters. Now I do like to take several readings because they can vary depending on exactly, it might be a little hair of wood or I might have it like that for example. Let's try and keep it upright. 0.59, okay that's two readings at 0.59 so uh, that's, a, that's about right. So now we need to um, move this jig over by that much. So I disengage the Bristol lever by pulling it out and set it to the 12 o'clock position. Then I unlock the jig underneath and then I need to rotate this by 36 minutes of the clock, which is about there and tighten the jig up again. And now that is perfectly flush. And this is just how flush it is. It doesn't ruffle a feather in that direction. And it doesn't ruffle a feather in that direction. That is flush. There are a couple of joints that we might not use very often, but it requires the workpiece to be moved over by just the width of the kerf of the blade. And the first of these is a simple halving joint. Now, a halving joint has got zero mechanical strength. It relies entirely on the glue. But it can be handy for making something that's lightweight and doesn't undergo a great deal of stress. So, we 
I've got, I've got my two pieces here, they're going to go together like that. And I've marked my center, and as before, the, mm, the face goes against the jig. So that goes in there like that. I've set the height of my blade to be the width of the workpiece. And so now we have to set it in the right position. Now, normally we set it up with a jig completely closed like this. But for this operation, we do not do that. We set it closed, not against the backstop, but against a spacer, any spacer will do. That one will do nicely. And then we set it up to cut to the waist side of the, uh, of the half, if you like. So let's move that over there, that up there. I'll have to get some stronger glasses, I think. The thing is, with this, it doesn't actually matter if it's not dead on center, because if one's a bit big, the other will be a bit small by the same amount. Right, so I think we're ready to go. Guards in place. That's ready, that's in the right place, and we make the first cut. Like that, and then we put the next one in, again, face, face against here, face against the jig. And now we alter the position of this so that it goes between the top carriage and the backstop, like that. And that has moved it up just the thickness of the kerf of the blade for the other piece. And I think you can probably see that they will go together They'll go together like that. There is a slightly more useful version of that joint called a bridle joint or an open mortise and tenon. And this is particularly useful on very narrow work pieces where to put a tenon into a mortise very close to the end of the style would leave me with very, very little wood beyond the mortise and likely to get blowout. So by eliminating that, you get no blowout and you get a bigger surface area for your glue. There are four cuts to be made in this method, and we need the spacer for the tenon. This is quarter, three quarter inch stock, so I'm gonna have a quarter inch tenon. And we also need another spacer, and it, this can be any size, it doesn't matter. And there are four cuts to make, two to make the tenon, and two to make the open mortise. And this is the setup. Normally, we would have the workpiece in, in the closed position to start with for the tenon, but not in this case. We're going to use the extra spacer and that's going to go in between the top carriage and the backstop, but behind the curve compensation stop so that it still has room to um, hang over. So that's going to be my first cut on the, for the tenon piece. The second cut for the other side of the tenon is going to be the extra spacer in there and the tenon spacer beside it. So that's moved the jig over by the um, tenon plus the kerf, just as normal. For the second workpiece that's going to have the open slot cut into it, things are slightly different. The first cut for that is made with our extra spacer between the kerf compensation stop and the backstop. And that'll be our first cut. And the difference between the first cut on the tenon and the first cut on the open mortise is the thickness of the kerf. So the difference between there and there is the thickness of the kerf. And then to move over to cut the other side of that, we put the tenon spacer in, but behind the curve compensation stop. Oops, a daisy. There we go. So that has moved it over by the thickness of the tenon minus the curve of the blade. And that's my fourth cut. Okay, so 
we will see how that goes. Um, I need to face mark. Okay, so that goes in there. I've set the position already because that's the, that's the most time consuming bit actually, especially when you can't see very well. There we go. That goes in there. And we start off with that there. Okay. And that is my tenon. Not perfectly central, but near enough. And so now the other piece, other work piece goes in. And the jig has got this work piece in between the curve compensation stop and the backstop. That is going to go very nicely, Steve. 